What's up guys? As you can see, this is my first video, so uh, give me a slip, I'm completely off or completely starting or anything like that, which I've probably done a thousand times by now. As you can see, I've been having that part at work with the setup, but we're getting there. So excuse the mess. Okay, it's probably not messy, that messy, but it can be a lot better than this. So um, we're getting there. Uh, I've got my audio interface set up, got my cheap Blaze keyboard set up. I've had this keyboard for like five years. I've got it for like five quid. Does a job, don't need to replace it yet. Got the, Ro the Razer Naga mouse. I forgot the name of it. Wow, that's embarrassing. Etc. Got my clock set up. My Samsung 4K monitor. The last riser stand, and of course the usual YouTube desk setup, the two Alex drawers and the minimum desk top. I've done slightly something slightly different. I've put a little layer of acrylic here. You can see that clearly. Because I'm not too pleased with the top of the minimum desk. It's just so I don't know, it gets dirty very easily and as I glide my hand across the mat of the table doesn't feel right. Of course I've got a gamer mat just to help with that but not it's not my kind of tabletop really where it's just it doesn't feel right. So I've got this acrylic top here measured the exact same dimensions as this it cost me about 130 120 to get this acrylic top cut to the size but the result is beautiful I'll put some videos of that hopefully in this video the main point of this video isn't the desk, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess, but I thought I'd show you anyway. The main point is the PC setup. This bad boy right here, I've had it for about six years, maybe seven, six or seven years. And it's got a Core i5, 2500K, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and initially had a GTX 460 when I first built it, and then I upgraded to a GTX 660, and now it's currently got a GTX 970. Um, has currently has three terabytes of storage and a 60 gigabyte cache SSD because I'm using Intel's caching technology, I've always called it Intel RST, it's rapid storage, yeah, but basically it speeds up the 3 terabyte drive. Now I'd been out of commission for a while because I've been moving office, um, I've only just set up the main part of the office, this is, you can see is this, although it still needs more work. But I thought I'd post this video because something drastic is going to change. This PC, as you can tell, is quite aged and is in need of a massive overhaul. But at this point, you're probably thinking there's no point of overhauling this PC. It's way too old. Just build a new one. That's exactly what I'm doing. Let me show you what I've got there. This is a Samsung Evo 850. Oh, it's upside down. 850 Pro, no not Pro, 850 Evo, because so I just can't afford a Pro right now. One terabyte SSD storage, this will be my boot drive. Leave that somewhere here. This is the Samsung 960 Evo M.2 drive. Yep, 250 gigs of storage, sorry I had to look for that. This will be just a fast drive for doing things like editing and work in general. You've heard a lot about this. Ryzen Threadripper. This is the 1950X. 16 cores, 32 threads. GTX 1080 Ti from Asus. This is the Strix Gaming graphics card. ROG Zenith Extreme. And a supernova 1300 watt power supply. Probably didn't need that much watts, but hey, I might want to expand in the future. 
bring in another 1080 Ti. Corsair Vengeance LPX 32 gig DDR4 RAM running at 2666 megahertz. It's a 4x4, sorry, 8x4 kit. Keeping this bad boy cool, we've got the Enemax or our Liptec 360 from Enemax. And this is the Threadripper Edition TR4, which has the big IHS for maximum heat dissipation. It's huge, the box alone. And there you have it. So I'm gonna get building this bad boy soon. But before I do, I wanna run some benchmarks on my old system because I'm gonna take the stuff from the old system. I'm gonna take the hard drive out for a start. Three terabytes, I could use that. Right then, I just thought I should point out as I built this machine a few years ago, well, six years ago now, the main priority was that I get a machine running. So, as you can see, it's probably not the best machine you've ever seen. This case must have cost me about 30 pounds at the time. And it's really basic, it does the job. It's got an on switch, there's a bit of LED there. Sweet. Well, one thing I found that I kind of needed, because I'm switching hard drives a bit, for whatever reason, maybe I need to get stuff off of my old machine. I need to connect my hard drive whenever I wanted to without the added blow of the caddy on the desk or the inconvenience of opening up a PC just to hook up a hard drive temporarily. So I've got a bay in the, in the 5.25 5 inch bay. I've got a 2.5 uh, inch slot and a 3.5 inch slot. And those are the power to that right there. It does the job, I'm quite happy with it. But we'll see, I mean going forward, I most likely won't be using either of these two because it turns out the case I'm getting doesn't have 5.25 inch bays. So a lot of you guys like to put inside cases, there will be a bit more of that in our new build too. But hey, let's just have a look inside this old case. Now, I must warn you, like I said at the beginning or earlier in earlier on in this video, the priority was to just get a build running and hit the ground running literally. So what you're about to see isn't gonna be anything great, but let's check it out. It'd be nice if I actually had screws. What do I say? Screw the driver. Yep, absolute trash, I know. This can be way better. But in the new build, that should change. But you have to cut me some slack because this case, being cheap, doesn't have a lot of space for cable management at the back here. It's literally just holding the motherboard and that's it. So, yeah. That's the GTX 970 down there. Got some 35 pound cooler, which is just a no push and pull config, it's just a push of coming out through the back, in through the front. 600 watt power supply. Right and yeah, that's the SSD is kind of hanging up the top there. DVD drive. Some three terabytes in there. Right, let's just hook this up and get started. Let's juice it up. Observe it boot. gonna start some benchmarks let's get going um, let's start with fire strike
Right, the test has just finished and we got 8,387. But not today's standards, right? We can do better. Right, I need to restart the PC because the first attempt to start Time Spy was a bit weird. It just showed this weird white box over here and the rest was black. It just didn't do anything. I don't know what happened there. So here we go again. Ready to go. PC's restarted. Let's do this. <laughs> what is it doing? I'm not going to waste time trying to get time to buy running on here. Let's just consider this test failed. Right, I've just downloaded a copy of Cinebench. The version is R15.0. R15.038 underscore RC18415. The rest of those numbers, most of you probably don't care about, but whatever. Right, I'm gonna run the, I'm gonna run this benchmark now and see how it goes. Let's do open GL. That got 76.90 FPS. Let's run the CPU benchmark. Right, it's just finished and it got a score of 406 and it's now comparing my CPU to well the i7 3840QM. Isn't that a mobile laptop CPU from four years ago? It's been good with this machine. It's about time I start building something better. I need to turn this box upside down. It's so big. Drum roll. Feast your eyes. On this beauty. VGA DG87. It's an amazing case. It's got a door to give me access to the inside. Let's get down to this, shall we? I just thought I should unmount the camera just to show you the size of this behemoth case. It's insane. Super insane. But I'm fine with that because power sometimes needs to be shown physically. Sometimes. But here's a comparison. That monitor there is 28 inches. My Surface Pro 3 over here is 12 inches. I believe 12 inches. Well, you can look it up. You see how huge that is? Crazy. Right, so the mobile will be situated like over here. This case fully supports ATX motherboards which is the motherboard that I have. If I go, go down a bit, we've got some ports here, up and down button for the fan controller. And there's a meant to be a little digital display here. You can't see it clearly, probably through the camera, but I can see the outlines of the display very subtly here. When we turn that on, you'd see that. Type C, HDMI, headphone, microphone, USB 3.0 and reset button. Oh, and of course the boost, K boost button and the on button, it has E on there for some reason. Classic UVGA. Quick build update. I have already put the power supply in there. So the power supply is in this particular side of it. You can't see it, which is nice. It keeps it clean. 
and I'm in the middle of screwing this bad boy in. I already had this screwed in when I tested it back when I bought it. Still working on it. Oh yeah, got some WAN show on the side. I like watching WAN show whilst I'm doing stuff or working. All right, just a quick update. Here we have the build in its current state. It's not quite finished, of course, but we're getting there. I had a few fun moments with trying to pry things open and stuff. I don't know why they make some of these latches so hard to just lift up. Feels like I'll break it or something. On top of that, it's made of plastic. Anyways, yeah. So that's the NMX cooler finally on there and hooked up, connected to the CPU. And I'm going to move on to the next bit, which should be, ah, of course, hooking up these little connectors onto the motherboard. So this should be interesting. Perhaps the next time I record, I'll finally be done. All right, guys, managed to get there in the end. As you can see, this is the build right here, running with no issues. Of course, the whole process wasn't without any issues, but got there in the end. So yeah, I've actually added a little bit here and there, a bit of a light, a uh, couple light touches here and there. So it's my, it's minor really. Um, I managed to add a an additional graphics card. Not another 1080 Ti, obviously, but actually my old graphics card. Um, I was experimenting with a bit of mining just to see just how much you know hashes I could pull out with this build. Um, but yeah, it wasn't all that great. Plus, my electric bill was kind of skyrocketing. So yeah, so this NMAX cooler. Every so often, it was like it would go through some kind of reset. Um, I'm not sure how to describe it best, but. Um, basically, I'll be just using the computer normally and every so often I'd notice that this will spin up a lot faster and then go back to its normal speed and at the same time this light would flash. Um, I can't say exactly what that is but I must say after a BIOS update with the motherboard, the ROG uh, Extreme, um, it has been fine. Um, I'm quite content with it so far. Uh, the lights have given me a couple of issues randomly um, in the past uh, of course with software updates and BIOS updates those have also been ironed out but even before I recorded this video like say I'd boot up the machine uh, these lights would be fine for a little while but then it's almost like the lights will start lagging like as if it's a bit of a like as you, as, as you can see now it's quite smooth but before it was like you know a bit of a slideshow animation <laughs> uh, I don't know how best to describe it other than that but after going into the Aura, Asus Aurora settings and hitting this very awkwardly placed button that has no label and it's in the corner and it's very small as well it looked like some kind of reset logo uh, it was fine so yeah, I'm quite cool with this so far. I've got the temperature, ambient temperature of the inside 
uh, displayed here, which is cool. I can control the actual fan speed if I press the mode button. Uh, then it's this light switches to exhaust fan and the percent that it's on uh, for a while, and then I can change that so that goes down and then also press it again for intake fan and reduce that. And if you listen, you'd realize this can be a very silent machine. <laughs> uh, I had it all on full blast because, of course, that with my mining, I required a lot of airflow. <laughs> but um, I've not been doing that for a while now, so I don't actually need them up that high. Another thing that's cool is, of course, right now this K mode is on, and K mode is stands for like performance. Uh, I don't know what the actual K is, but yeah, that's basically performance mode. And that not only affects the fan profile that it's on, so let me increase that to say like 95% on both the intake and the out exhaust fan. But yeah, not only does it change the fan profile, but it also changes the power profile in Windows, which is pretty cool. Um, I hear this sound that plays through the speakers whenever I press this, uh, which indicate not only that, but um, I notice a significant drop in performance when I turn this off. So if I turn that off, you can see, I can then go into here and see that this, these prof um, the actual fan intake and exhaust settings has changed so I'm quite cool with that it's a nice call it like an overclock button if you will for most tasks like browsing the web and stuff like that basic non strenuous tasks even writing code in Visual Studio having this off is just fine it saves me power as well as it just being quiet. Think of it as an eco mode, basically. Anyhow, I'm quite happy with it so far. I've actually been using it for at least a month with normal workloads. So, um, for example, Visual Studio, I've been doing some work with that, I've been doing some work with Unity 3D, some work here and there with video, other kinds of video editing. And as, a, as a matter of fact, this exact video you're watching was edited on this rig right here. And um, from what I've seen so far, yes, I have been doing some editing whilst recording this footage. It has been a month. For what I've seen so far, I'm very impressed with what it's managed to output so far. It, the rendering speeds are just quick. Uh, the editing speeds I think I need to optimize a bit more of course this is 4k footage and so I need to experiment some more with using proxies and such I am using Adobe Premiere for this um, the Adobe After Effects performance is very good and, um, I, I will one day perhaps in a future video show just how that is going uh, this, the kind of performance and getting out of it in terms of you know, real-time playback and so forth but yeah so far so good I will add some benchmarks there will be of course comparisons from my old machine to the new one with not time spy because that failed fire strike with the same settings it is of course the basic version that I've got not the advanced one and Cinebench, I hope you will stay subscribed because I've got quite a cool video series coming up. I may or may not have mentioned before, but I'll say it now. My main focus for this video channel at this current time will be develop software development tutorials or game development tutorials uh, with a bit of spice. Now, one thing I've noticed on YouTube as of late is it's very dry when it comes to these kinds of things there are a lot of people doing it with a lot of different ways of you know showing how to do things but I want to bring my own take to it it will be a lot more animated shall I say and I aim to kind of make it I kind of want to market it in a sense and bring a very fresh take on what it what game development is and how easy it can be for even the average person to just pick it up and start making stuff real easily and quickly. Um, I will show you potentially some examples from my own projects of course 
very light touches here and there because I don't want to show off everything or like such as all my underlying code you know don't need to be telling everyone my secrets here and there but the secrets I will let you know is of course the stuff that I apply on a day-to-day -day basis you know the techniques I use the mindset I'm applying and I will share as much as I can with you with you guys just not you know that specific project but I digress of course stay tuned you will be hearing more from me about this project and its progress and its release date all right thanks for watching please leave a like or dislike uh, comment down below on what you think about the build or anything you saw would love to know your thoughts on it all uh, in the next video I will be showing benchmarks for this build and comparisons against the old Sandy Bridge build that includes Time Spy, Fire Strike, Cinebench. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be running any more benchmarks beyond that but yeah do subscribe absolutely if you want to see that and of course there'll be more content coming later on in the future uh, that being uh, anything tech related but more importantly developer focused uh, videos that isn't just for developers but for anyone and is meant to be engaging too so do check that out I look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you for watching SGDAT out